In this section of the textbook, we'll discuss probability. In this particular video, we'll informally define a random variable. We are envisioning some experiment that has a random numerical outcome. The random variable is the outcome. Now, I put experiment in quotation marks here. You shouldn't be thinking of a laboratory or anything like that. By experiment, I just mean a random process. And it could be the kind of random artificial process that you see in casinos, for example. You flip a coin 10 times and count the number of heads. But it also includes more naturalistic examples. For example, I walk to work from my apartment every morning. It takes me about 10 minutes to get to work but sometimes it takes me a little longer. Sometimes I'm a little quicker. We can think of that as an experiment. Now, this X is a random variable and this X is a random variable. But there's a difference between them. This random variable x can only take on a finite number of values. You could have, although it's hardly likely, zero head, one heads, two heads, up to 10 heads. And those are the only possible outcomes. Here, there are an infinite number of outcomes. It could take me 10 minutes or 10.0876. Two, five, four, three minutes, or you see what I mean. We can just keep creating these decimals, and rather than having finitely many possible outcomes. There are infinitely many. We don't need calculus to work with probability when there are a finite number of outcomes. It's only for situations like this where calculus is necessary. Let's give a name to these cases. The textbook defines a discrete random variable as one with finitely many outcomes, like this here. That doesn't seem quite correct to me. Um, in most cases, if your, ran, if your possible outcomes were the natural numbers, you would call that discrete, even though there are infinite 
exactly many natural numbers. However, since we're not going to use calculus for discrete random variables, it's not really important to get that definition perfectly correct. The definition we're going to actually need is this. We'll call a random variable continuous if it can take on any value in some interval from A to B. Here, A could be finite, or it could be a negative infinity. B could be finite, or it could be a positive infinity. So this interval could be finite, could be infinite. And to study continuous random variables, it turns out that we need the integral.